Batman. He's everywhere, and not just his own universe, he's crossing over, crossovers for days. Greetings comic lovers, and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from movies to comics new and old, to history to anecdotes, really wherever our whims take us. There are a lot of comics out there, and sometimes when trying to decide upon a topic, it can cause a kind of option paralysis. Especially if the idea is something vague, like, hmm, it'd be nice to do a Batman crossover. Which one? Because there are so many. While I was perusing all these different crossovers, I got to thinking. Some of them are pretty obscure and may have fallen down the memory hole, or people may just not know about them, may want to be reminded of them. Or also know that they're not alone. Somebody else read these. It might just be fun to highlight the fact that some of these exist at all. Some Batman crossovers are front and center. For example, Batman and Scooby-Doo, a classic. Batman and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles got adapted. Batman Fortnite is current, time of recording. And Batman Elmer Fudd always makes those you won't believe these crossovers lists but there are so many more out there. And sifting through these takes patience, and dare I say, skill. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes by a wide array of instructors, with a focus on creativity and self-growth. If you're interested in expanding your skills, there's a class on here for you. Are you interested in animation, editing, how to grow or start a YouTube channel? There are classes in all those things. I'm always looking to improve, so I took a fun class about color correcting, because let's be real, it gets rough up in here sometimes. Jordy Van put a YouTuber has a class called Premiere Pro Lumetri 2020, color correct and color grade like a pro, which was fun, approachable, and got right to the fundamentals, and it was engaging. I even got a comment on my improved lighting in a video recently. So thanks, Jordy. With Skillshare, not only can you choose your classes, how long they are, you can also choose your instructors, leave off at any point because they're broken down into chapters, and there are no ads, so they're perfect for if you have a busy schedule. If you're interested in joining and expanding your skill set, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thanks, Skillshare. Now, when it comes to these crossovers, I want to share them with you. Perhaps for the first time, perhaps to remind you of them, perhaps to revisit an old favorite. I'm Sasha, and let's take a look at some Batman crossovers. Crossovers that I've been flirting with covering. Let me know if you feel that any of them warrant full coverage. And do YouTube things. Like and subscribe. Join on the comic book journey. Let's start off with a Marvel slash DC crossover. Daredevil slash Batman, eye for an eye. This story was published in 1997. And was written by DJ Chichester, with art by Scott McDaniel. This story is 90s-ing hard in the art. It's set up as an Elseworlds to justify the crossover. This is one of those DC Marvel crossovers where the universes have simply always existed side by side. It opens up giving you a backstory in each hero, though, just in case, because you never know. In this story, Two-Face has partnered up with Mr. Hyde, which forces Batman and Daredevil to team up. Reluctantly, they fight when they first meet each other, in the sewers, because of course they do. This story does more with intertwining the universes than most. For example, positioning Harvey Dent and Matt Murdock as former friends, pitting their conflicting views about justice against each other. However, this one, some may have some issues with the characterization. It goes hard into Batman as the real person, and Bruce is just a mask, and Batman has no empathy at all for his villains. In contrast to the Daredevil, Mr. Sympathy, so they have conflict. The thing with these DC and Marvel crossovers is it's always interesting to see which characters get along and which ones don't. And it's also interesting to see whether or not you agree with the characterizations put forth. Sometimes with these, there can be clear biases or a better understanding of one set of characters than the other, and that can come through in the story. This story features the theft of a computer chip, one that can be installed into somebody's brain. Now, these two characters actually end up in another crossover later on. For some of these, you'll have that. There'll be two, and then the names will be flipped. This one's from the year 2000, and it's Batman slash Daredevil Kings of New York, written by Alan Grant with art by Eduardo Barreto. It might be interesting to get some of those duos and read them back to back and kind of compare and contrast. What do you think? Because some of them have very different vibes. Speaking of multiple stories, Batman spot the Predator three times, at least. The first time was in 1991, in Batman vs. Predator. Then in 1995, Batman vs. Predator, Blood Match. And again in 1997, Batman vs. Predator, Blood Ties. The first one was by Dave Gibbons, with art by Andy and Adam Kuber. It was three issues long, a little mini. Adam Kuber even won Eisner for it. The art in this one is pretty cool, and they go for this gritty, muted color scheme throughout. This one starts off dealing with Gotham's boxing circuit, which is controlled by Gotham's gangsters. Oh, are we sure this one shouldn't have been the Daredevil crossover? When one of the fighters is murdered after winning, suspicion falls onto the rival player players' handlers, but the crime is too brutal. No skull ripped out fatality style. So Batman investigates, which leads him to the Predator. His first bout with the alien is disastrous. You gotta be prepared for the Predator. Or cover yourself in mud. <laughs> 
Batman needs to recoup before he can fight him again, and so the Predator seeks new targets as he waits for his worthy foe to recover. If you love the Predator, this is for you. It's really credible, much more than you may expect when you first hear the concept pitched. It plays it entirely straight, but it also feels like it's in an isolated universe. Don't ask why everybody isn't rushing in instantly to help Batman. Superman's just hovering above Gotham. Let them fight. Three times, people couldn't get enough. And yes, Batman also fought Xenomorphs more than once, but let's get more obscure. We need to go deeper. The Darkness slash Batman. He never asked for the darkness. <laughs> Sorry, does anybody else remember those ads for the darkness too? They were all over YouTube for a bit and they're burned into my brain. I never asked for the darkness. It chose me. This crossover is from 1999. It was written by Jeff Loeb and Scott Lobdell, with art by Mark Silvestri, Dave Finch, and Clarence Lansing. The Darkness is Jackie Estacado, or at least at the start it's him. He first appeared in Witchblade number 10, a Top Cow Comics. This is when Witchblade's lore was really expanding. Now Jackie was raised to be a hitman for the mob, but he has a set of rules. Kinda, oh, you know these two are just gonna get along great. A series of murders have been taking place across Gotham City of Mafia members, and Batman is trying to figure out who's behind it. The MO is unlike any of his villains, and also some of the kills seem physically impossible. The killer is none other than Jackie. This on orders from his uncle, uncle in quotes, and mobster Frankie Frachetti, and he also wants him to kill Batman. This one works really well. It's kind of amazing. The universes blend excellently thanks to the mobster lore already built into Batman stories. So when you see people like Catwoman show up, it just tracks. Batman is hilariously unfazed by having to face the darkness or his darklings. This story also asks a question. I'm not sure if it was a big thing at the time, so let me know. It's the, are they one and the same? They were both orphans, and maybe Bruce only didn't end up like Jackie because he had people who believed in him. Alfred is the one telling Bruce this, which I love. It's like he's giving himself one giant back pat. He's like, thank God you have people who loved you. It's okay, someone needs to give Alfred a back pat. Give some more love to Alfred. This story wins extra points too for people being in character and not tweaked to suit the circumstance. This one, if you can find it, a big recommend personally. For whatever that's worth. Although it does help if you know some of the darkness's lore, at least the fundamentals. I mean, the darkness's name does come first, so they seem to be expecting you to know something. Who's Jackie? Who's his girlfriend? What's going on? Let's get a bit more recent. It's been a 90s fest. Come with me and you'll be in the world of 2020. Oh, you probably don't want to then. Well, thankfully, issue zero of this came out in 2019. This is Batman and Dylan Dog. That's right, international crossover. Dylan Dog is a character from Italian horror comics. Dylan Dog is a paranormal investigator, but he'll also deal with serial killers and the like. He's not just gonna nope out if it's not paranormal. He's committed. There is also an adaptation with Brandon Routh. During the period when he was in a bunch of not that well-received superhero adaptations, I'm so glad the CW saved him. Now there is a sentence that's rarely uttered. There is also another movie before that that was kind of a loose adaptation, Cemetery Man. And there's also supposed to be a TV series, but again, trust nothing until you're watching it. Time of recording. Now, sadly, I have not read this crossover, and it's for one simple reason. It is not in English. At least not yet. But if you're in Italy or read Italian, you're in luck. This one's by Roberto Riccioni, with art by Gigi Cavanago and Werther Deladera. I have to say, from what I've seen, the art looks cool, especially the Joker in that style. If you have read them, tell me about them. But just so you know, it's out there. The international crossovers are always fascinating to me, and DC's been doing a bunch of them of late. Superman eating his way across Japan. Well, that was nice back in the 90s. The decade of crossovers, apparently. Batman slash Grendel. But wait, who is Grendel, I hear some of you say. Grendel is a character created by Matt Wagner. His real name is Hunter Rose, an author by day, assassin by night, and also just whenever. Also, he took over the New York Mafia. At least the first Grendel for, oh yes, multiple Grendels. This comic also has an interesting publication history. It had a period of bouncing from publisher to publisher. Also, Netflix is adapting it. Now there are a couple of crossovers between Batman and Grendel. We have Devil's Riddle and Devil's Mask in 1993, it was two parts, and then Devil's Bones in 1996, both written and illustrated by Wagner. The first one involves Hunter Rose growing bored in his own city. He's just too good. So he goes to Gotham for a challenge, the challenge being that he wants to commit a crime and get away with it. Just how good is the Dark Knight? I just need to stop to tell you the narration boxes are doing the most in this one. They're canted to the sides, they've got different fonts, it's stylistically interesting but at times does interfere with reading flow. Also, bask in Hunter's shirt, fall into it, become one with it. This one is a big cat and mouse tale with lots of side characters. It very much plays in the detective realm and plays in this battle of not just physicality, but their intelligence. It takes its time and has a clear love for both characters. It's also gritty and dark because it's the 90s. Personally though, I found it hard to read. Like, look at these two different bubbles from Batman and Grendel. Yes, they certainly contrast them, but it's jarring jumping from one to the other. And also, yes, you definitely need to know who Grendel is or the emotional changes he's 
going through as he becomes more and more impressed with Batman throughout the story aren't gonna resonate as much. Let's stay obscure, but come back to recent and to something that you could probably actually get your hands on. Batman slash The Max, Arkham Dreams. Now, even though this one is more recent, it kind of flew under the radar for a lot of people. It's a five issue miniseries released from 2018 to 2020. Pandemic delays hit it a bit hard. This one is a bit divisive. It's written and illustrated by Sam Keith, and the story centers around Gotham and Batman being pulled into the Max's mental landscape, the Outback, after an encounter with a sketchy Arkham doctor doing experiments on the human psyche. Aren't they always? Now this comic, while being a trip, does try to explain the basics. There's a whole opening segment where they try to explain the world of the Max and just what the Max is doing and its MO and who he's protecting and the Jungle Queen and all that stuff. So at the start, you may think if you haven't read the Max, you might be okay, but it's still a fairly confusing read. This is one of those things that you may need to read multiple times. Potentially. Some people may be like, I got it. I got it right away. What are you talking about? Now, of course, would this be a comic about a mindscape in Gotham without some or most of Batman's rogues coming into play? I think not. This one jumps around a lot, and there aren't really clear transitions in between reality and the outback. It's one that some may seek out for the experience or the art or the novelty, but some may find this less enjoyable narratively, or even also the art style is not going to be for everybody. The Max was a very surreal series by Sam Keith that ran initially from 1993 to 1998. People have done some deep dives into it here on YouTube. So if you need to know more, it's out there. Just type in the max with two X's. Let's round off by coming back into the realm of something a bit more familiar, Batman and Spawn. What? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you over how unbelievably 90s that is. This came out in 1994 and was written by Frank Miller with art by Todd McFarlane, who got all up in Batman's cape. Glorious Batman cape action. This one had a continuity note at the start. This was to say it didn't reflect DC's canon at the time, even though it was also playing in the realm of Miller's Dark Knight universe. All that early DC image testiness. People had fun with this one though, in terms of whether it was canon or not, because an injury that Spawn receives in this issue you, some say that transferred over into Spawn number 21. In this story, Batman comes to New York because there are robots using decapitated heads as their brains. Does Batman tear the head off a robot? You bet he does. You must be Al. I don't know why that made me laugh when I first read it, but it did and it still does. Batman and Spawn fight, of course. Spawn uses magic to win though, and even he says it feels like cheating. But they fight again. Yeah, most of the issue is them fighting. This before they realize they have a common enemy via mind link. The story is a little odd, but it's not the only Spawn Batman crossover from that year. There's also Batman Dash Spawn, War Devil. This one had three writers, Chuck Dixon, Doug Mensch, and Alan Grant, with art by Klaus Janssen. And this one is unconnected to the other one. They just start talking like it's their first time meeting in it. This one is a zombie story, wherein Batman and Spawn end up coming together while Batman is trying to solve the disappearance of a man named Virgil Dare, which leads into Simon Vesper, a man Spawn murdered but who has returned. This story is actually playing with the mystery of the lost colony, Roanoke. This right down to the inclusion of Croatoan. So it's interesting from that perspective. It's a play on a modern mythology. And there's more interplay between Spawn and Batman here than just the two duking it out. So some feel because of this, this is the superior crossover. This team up earned the friendship shout out in Mortal Kombat 11. You remind me of another Dark Knight, the billion dollar crusader. He's a friend. So yes, those were some Batman crossovers you may not have known about. I know that there are more. I see you, Batman Judge Dredd. Again, multiple times. I've been flirting with so many of these more than once. Which of these was the most interesting to you? And if you have read them, which did you enjoy or not enjoy? Which crossover would you love to see me cover? Let me know all those things down below. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I have the link down there for that too. Now, while you're checking out all those things down there, please roll the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never a vid. Thanks so much for taking this time or day spent discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it. I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.